Right, this video is uh, the video accompaniment to a blog post that I'll link below that I've been doing for a few years now and kind of adding to each year, which is my Christmas gift ideas for potters. And so I thought I'd get this recorded with a month before Christmas and um, it being Black Friday. So if you're going to look for gifts, now's not a bad time to do it. Um, and these are the ones that I would recommend. The blog post goes into much more detail on the second half of it, but um, I do have my top five lists um, and I will go through those now. And then if there's anything you want kind of more info on, then I would recommend um, go to the blog post, scroll down, I expand on them. Everything's got links on there, so um, worth going to. Right, so the first one for beginners is one of the cheap sets of budget tools. You can get them for about seven or eight pounds, uh, possibly a little bit more in dollars, and for that you would get eight tools, or thereabouts, um, and then the price goes up and you get more tools. They're not amazing, but they're easily good enough, and I, a lot of them I continue to use the cheap tools for years because they are of a good enough quality that you can produce, you know, there's, there's no kind of upper limit to it. They're not as good as the, the most expensive ones, but they're plenty good enough, and if you're a beginner, it's a way of getting everything you need in one go. So if someone's just started out and you're buying a gift for them and they haven't got all the tools, I would definitely start with that one because that one just covers everything and it's a, it's nice to have that choice. You'll get a few different trimming tools, a few different ribs uh, and sponge and wire-off tool and things like that. Next, beginner books. Cara and John the Potter, whose t-shirt I am wearing, have both released beginner books this year and they are both very good choices. So if you're buying a book for a beginner, I would recommend either of those. A higher quality version of a basic tool. So the, the cheap kit gives you everything you need, but there are some things where you can relatively inexpensively upgrade to the next level up. Um, if you're looking for sponges, my personal preference is the Zeem porcelain sponges, the blue ones. They're about five pounds each, um, and they're a bit firmer, and they throw really nicely, so I, I'm a big fan of them. Um, you can get a trimming tool, the mud tools, do all trim tools, a great one. Or um, I use the green mud tools ribs. I think this is the number five, but I'm not 100% certain, but any of them, they're all, they're nice shapes. I've got a couple kicking about because the different shapes are useful, so it doesn't actually matter which shape you get and green is good for throwing, so those would be my recommendations for that. Uh, another one is hand cream, because it's often overlooked, but uh, clay will dry your hands out really successfully, and if you don't kind of stay on top of it, your skin will crack. So um, I just use a Neutrogena one. Um, you could, there are pottery specific ones that apparently are really good, um, but anything will do, just, just something to have to hand that you'll remember to use. And then my last recommendation for beginners is something at a, a local class. If you can find, I mean obviously it's a bit more difficult at the moment, but if you can find somewhere near the office classes, then you get to build that community, you get the hands-on first-hand experience. Um, there's no kind of substitute for that over the internet. As good as online learning can be, having that in-person thing is great, plus obviously then they can fire work if needs be. So if you can find somewhere local and do a class there, then you know, that's, a, that's a great gift option. Um, for intermediates, the first recommendation is the same as the uh, beginner one, which is the higher quality version of a basic tool. So intermediates will probably get more mileage out of a better sponge so I would highly recommend either the zine ones or mud tool sponges both are great um, you can get diamond core tools are doing their trimming tools which I absolutely love um, they come in a variety of shapes I'm a big fan of the T7 and the T9 the um, shark's fin one uh, these are very versatile um, and very useful and a the, the more unique ones can fulfill a, a kind of gap that um, normal trimming tools don't, so they're a great thing to upgrade. Next would be an unusual unusual tool, like the car dent puller, um, the laser that I use for as a throwing guide, or um, these 
Zeem ball modelling tools. I absolutely love these. They are great for burnishing things. If you've ever seen me trim the bottom of a mug, I use these to burnish the radius of um, corners, which you can't really do any other way. And the cheap, you can get these in a cheap version that will wear out, but the Zeem ones are stainless steel through and through, I think. Um, anyway, I've been using them for ages now, and there's no sign of wear. So either you can get the cheap set or buy individual Zeem ones. Uh, either will be a good option, but I see the Zeem ones are more durable. Books, there's Mastering the Potter's Wheel by Ben Carter, great book. A Potter's Workbook by Clary Illion. Um, which is more theoretical than practical, kind of talking about how and why you should throw the shapes you do and what sort of things to practice. Um, both very good books for an intermediate to read to kind of help them keep progressing. Four is GIF and Grip. Absolutely love this. Um, uh, it automatically centres and grips things. I use it for trimming, I use it for wax resisting and for sanding. So you get your money's worth out of it. Um, uh, yeah, great. Expensive, but great bit of kit that. Highly recommend that. And then number five is a ceramic materials workshop course, which I really cannot recommend highly enough. You can get the cone six one using my discount code for 25% off. Or if, you're, if you've got the time and you can get on it, they do the full understanding glazes online course, which is a bit more expensive, but that's the one that has the hangouts and the labs where you work through a glaze um, and follow it from kind of start to finish, taking it apart and reassembling it in different ways to understand how it works. So either of those great options. If you make glazes, then you need to take one of those courses basically because you'll learn so much more and it makes so much more sense if you go through that than anything else that I'd found up until that point. Highly, highly recommend them um, and yeah, the. The offer code and the links are in the blog post. My top five under ten dollars, a bit of repetition here, but number one, my Zeme sponge. Number two, my green mud tools rib. Number three is the Diamond Core trimming spinner. The idea with this is that when you're trimming a pot rather than resting your finger on it and denting the pot or marking it, this has got a soft foam base you rest that on and then you can rest your finger in the groove and it spins under your finger um, so that it spreads out the load doesn't mark the pot and lets you pin it to the wheel while you trim it. it has markings round to um, divide pots it has thirds quarters fifths sixth seventh eighths and ninths so you can when um, you're doing anything that involves dividing a pot you can rest this on the top centered and then mark down from there which is useful as well. Zeem needle tool. This is basically just like a normal needle tool, but far more sturdy and sharp. Yeah, you only ever need to buy one of these, but they are very useful and they are a step up over the flimsier, cheap ones that you get. Zeem uh, slip applicator bottle. This comes with a, a bunch of interchangeable nozzles and obviously you fill it with slip and then I use it for the impulse dots and trailing slip foots onto things and things like that. You can get um, cheaper sets of these on Amazon that are significantly cheaper. They don't have the locking part, they're just, they're just pressure fit. So they're not quite as good, but they are almost as good. So depending on whether or not you want one that's really good or a bunch of them where you can keep a bunch of different um, coloured slips ready to go, you know, you might get, pick between the two, but I have both because it is sometimes useful to have lots of different coloured slips. My top five under £25 or dollars, um, first would be my foot drawing tool. These are uh, tools that I make that put a rounded foot on the bottom of something very quickly and easily. And there's a, I've got a video demonstrating them, but essentially all you do is after you finish throwing a piece, you just slide that in at the base and it gives a rounded foot consistently within a couple of seconds rather than having to try and trim it on later. Um, I made it because I couldn't, I wanted to buy one and couldn't find anything that worked quite the way 
uh, I wanted it to, so I made them and then started selling them. Next is the car dent puller. I use these to glaze pots. If you wax resist the bottom of a pot, uh, this can just suction to it, and then you can hold the pot like that, which means you can dunk it into a bucket of glaze direct straight down. Um, so it can you can use a smaller packet of glaze than if you're using tongs. Um, it's just more convenient all round. They're inexpensive and work really well if you buy a good one and use it properly. I've got instructions on that. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're linked in the blog post, but if not, you can find them on this channel. Next, um, under 25, a very popular trimming tool is the Mud Tools Dual Trim Tool. Very versatile, very useful, um, works really well. There's not a huge amount to say. Next is Diamond Core Tools Sanding Pads. These are an absolute game changer in, in improving the bottom of your pieces. Um, I use a grinding disc to level the bottom and then I use the, uh, the pads uh, go from 60, 120 and then up to 400 so I get nice and smooth bottoms but they're a, a one-time purchase basically they don't really wear out so I'm still using the ones that I bought when I started so highly highly recommend them I get the flexible ones just because it lets you get into uh, kind of round corners better but um, yeah, I highly recommend them. And then the last one is the laser that I use for as a throwing gauge. I use it to find vertical when attaching handles. And also if you're doing anything where you need to mark a piece, um, as if you're doing kind of geometric carving, very useful for that too. Um, again, there's, I recommend that specific green one now. Um, for a few reasons that are made clear in the video that talks about it. Any of them will do, but I, I like this one for a, a couple of reasons. This is everything over £25 or dollars. Um, you'll have to forgive the... So you can hear the weather <coughs> while recording this video, the heavens have opened. So, uh, it's still the same day, <laughs> it just doesn't sound like it. Um, yeah, first one over £25, significantly over £25, Hartley & Noble Russian Doll Bat System. Absolutely love it. Um, they will fit, they'll, they'll make it to fit any wheel head. Um, basically, you get a master bat that um, goes on and then you get these inserts. So, you can have three sizes of insert. So you insert that and then you insert the inner bit and what that means is that in a small studio rather than having a bat this big for every bit of work you can have a bat this big when you're throwing little things and the amount of space that changes in the studio I can fit a whole day's work on a board where it used to be a real problem if I had a good day's throwing so I then wouldn't have space to do anything and makes a real, really big difference. So, great investment. They are an investment, but um, if you order over £100 worth of stuff from Hartley & Noble and give my name at checkout, you get a free gift with your order. Next tool, going back to the Diamond Core tools, trimming tools. Again, I love the T7, T9, but there are some very useful shapes in there and some very strange shapes like this one is great for trimming um, inside when I do planters and I trim the hole in the base. You get that inner radius which is very uncommon on a trimming tool. So you can trim some unusual shapes and then they have um, some more normal ones. But with all of these the blade is replaceable and then the handle has a shape at the foot which um, depending on, they've all got different shapes. So they can all be useful for different things, particularly like the, the pointy ones for when you throw narrow neck stuff and you want to open out the base. Well, yeah, the replaceable heads and the interesting shapes makes them a very useful thing to, to have around. Next one, give them grip. Again, absolutely fantastic tool. 
Uh, I would definitely replace it if anything happened to this one. Uh, it pays for itself in no time because of the amount of time you'll save when just getting pieces on and off the wheel centered and pinned down and then you, obviously there's no chance of them coming loose where when you stick down uh, clay wadding there's a small chance. Uh, next, Diamond Core tools, carving tools. Now, yeah, I don't tend to do that much carving. Occasionally I do and occasionally I need non-aesthetic carving. So I'm not carving a pattern to something but I need to carve something um, practical like a, a channel on a plant a foot so the water can get out. But the thing with the Diamond Core tools ones is that they cut through clay, especially for quite dry clay, they cut through it almost effortlessly with a really crisp line. So if you're going to get a carving tool, these are very comfortable and very sharp. Um, so you can't really do better than them. And they come in a range of different shapes, so you get pencil style ones, and then these um, ones which are easier to, more comfortable to hold. So they've got a range of cutting heads, a range of shapes, um, but if you're only looking at getting one, I would get the V-tip pencil shape, I think, which is this one, my favorite. You get nice deep lines, which it, um, glazers will run through. And yeah, it's a nice shape to carve with. I mentioned it in the previous section as to how I finished the bottom of my putts. But this is a 240 grit grinding disc. And the thing with the grinding discs is because they, you put a piece on and just let the wheel turn um, and it levels the bottom of them really quickly because it's taking off the high spots, unlike the sanding pads where you're applying pressure over a whole surface. Um, these just focus on the high point, so you take away material very quickly. Um, so I would recommend a 240, unless you, you know you're going to have a lot of material to remove. You can get these in 60 and 120, which are more aggressive, and I don't think you need that. Um, I definitely don't. I do actually have both a 60 and a 120, and I don't bother using them. My idea was to work through them to very quickly take the bottom off um, pots and then I go over with the sandpaper and I found the 60 and the 120 were unnecessary because of how good this one is. So if you're going to get one, I would recommend just getting one big uh, 240 grit. And you can get it on a plastic um, thing, a plastic bat that attaches to a wheel head if that fits your wheel. If not, you can get it and there's adhesive disc and then buy uh, a different your own bat that fits your wheel and stick it to it um, but yeah really really useful for making pots that don't wobble and it saves so much time because it just removes clay so quickly I literally just a couple of seconds with water I have this turning at full speed and just pass a pot around a couple of times and then it's, that's that part done so I highly recommend that. So hopefully that's given you some thoughts or at least directions to, to go if you're looking for a gift or looking to treat yourself um, on Black Friday. Um, yeah, there's significantly more recommendations on the blog post and there are links to everything. This way of breaking it down hopefully means that it's easier for you to find a specific gift if you've got a, a target in mind or a price in mind. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you think I missed or there's anything you're particularly looking forward to getting this year and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas.